Okay, so today I will show you how to put a Nixie Cube inside the shifter knob to show the current gear because, because why not? I think the Nixie Cube looks great and I think that this shifter knob will fit nicely in some retro futuristic kind of car maybe. Please let me know in the comment section what car would be a perfect fit for such a knob. And this is actually not the first time that I'm putting a display inside the shifter knob. I have the entire video series. I have used the 128 by 64 pixel OLED display. I have tried the 7x11 white LED matrix display. I was also experimenting with the 5x5 RGB LED matrix display. And my all time favorite is this round full color LCD display. However, today's project is slightly different. All the previous displays were working with the 5 volts, which is the same voltage used in the Arduino Uno, but Nixie tubes require high voltage to operate, so you cannot just connect them directly to the Arduino Uno, as nothing would really happen. You need to provide the required high voltage, not 5 volts, but actually around 200 volts. So what's the secret sauce to make it work? Well, before I tell you, let's talk about the sponsor of today's project, which is PCBWay. Because if you are making electronic projects, sooner or later you might need PCBs or PCB assembly or SMD stencils. And PCBWay offers all of those services for a reasonable price. On top of it, if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free only paying for shipping. And PCBWay also created prototypes for this PCB, which is actually the secret sauce that we will be using today. It's called Easy Nixie, and as the name suggests, it should make controlling Nixies easy. It also says don't touch when powered, which is probably a reasonable thing to do. Again, because some of those pins will have about 200 volts when powered up. So let's see how easy it is actually to control the Nixie tube with the Arduino and this board. You can buy this board on the Tindy store for $19, and if you use this very cryptic looking coupon code, you can actually get 10% off. The creator of this project used multiple of those modules chained together to create this very nice looking radio. And it's just a great looking project using all kinds of Nixie tubes in different sizes. And I would buy that radio in a heartbeat, but let's get back to our project and the driver board. I believe that this Easy Nixie board started as a Kickstarter project and it was successfully backed last year. And this Kickstarter page includes all the important details, including some nice looking animations and the list of Nixie tubes that could be used with this board, because there are quite a lot of different Nixie tubes out there. If I keep scrolling down, there are more images showing different Nixie tubes, but I'm looking for the Arduino code, actually for the Arduino library, which is down here. So this is the link for the GitHub page with the Arduino library. So I'll just click this code button and click download the zip file, open the Arduino IDE and then go to sketch, include library and select the add zip library and select the downloaded zip file and click the open button and that will install the library. And once the library is being installed, we can go to File, Examples, locate the library, which is this one, Easy Nixie, and open some example, for example, this basic LED. Now there is not too much comments in this sketch, but I believe that this sketch is just driving the onboard LED and not controlling the Nixie cube at this point, but it should be a simple way to see if the board works. Let's write down those pin connections. Actually, let's jump back to the Kickstarter page, because here all the pins are listed. So let's just write down those connections and try to connect the board to the Arduino Uno in the same way. Now I'm using the Arduino Uno with this breadboard holder so everything stays in place, but you can as well just use jumper wires, or you can for example use this breadboard shield. In any case, I will connect the DS in pin to pin 7, the DS out pin is not connected, that's only in the case if you want to use multiple of those modules, then the STCP is to connect it to pin number 6 and SHCP is connected to pin number 2, the out EN is connected to pin number 3 and the VLogic is connected to 5 volts. There are two more pins on the other side of the board, but I believe that those are for powering up the Nixie cube, and since we don't have the Nixie cube connected at this point, let's not worry about it for now. But of course I do need to connect the Arduino Uno to my PC using the USB cable. And back in the Arduino IDE I will select my Arduino Uno from this drop down menu and then click the upload button. And once this is uploaded, we should see the RGB LED on the board changing the color. Now this is not a NeoPixel LED, it's just a standard RGB LED with only a few predefined colors, but it's a great sign that this board is working. Also to be fair, I don't like very much when the LED is shining below the Nixie cube, so I'll most likely not use that LED anyway. 
So let's disconnect the Arduino from the power and let's try to connect the Nixie Cube. And again, the Kickstarter page shows the list of supported Nixie Cubes, so I've ordered all those five different types. This Nixie Cube is 12A, which is probably the most common one out of those five types. And I actually have Nixie Cube clock from AliExpress that uses four of those Nixie Cubes. But for our board, I will connect to just one, and it's important to have the correct orientation. If you look closely, there is this small arrow pointing to one pin, and that should be for the high voltage power supply, and that should be connected to pin HV, the high voltage on the board. The good news is that there is quite tight fit for those pins, so for testing, you don't actually have to solder those connections. But what we have to do is to connect the 5V and the ground pins on the other side of the board. And of course those will be connected to 5V and the ground pins on the Arduino Uno. Just keep in mind that if you want to use more than one Dixie Cube, you should get a separate 5V power supply. And so with everything connected, let's also connect the USB cable to the Arduino Uno. And let's jump back into the Arduino IDE. In here I will again go to File, Examples, then open this Easy Nixie and this time I will select this Hello Nixie sketch. And that should show individual numbers on the Nixie cube. And since we have everything connected, all that's left to do is to click the Upload button. And indeed, after a few seconds, we see the numbers counting from 0 all the way to 9 on the Nixie cube. And again, I think this looks great. I really like the appearance of the Nixie cubes and how they are glowing. Now this type, the 12A, is obviously for displaying numbers 0 to 9, so let's take a closer look at the other Nixie cubes that I have. This other one is the 12B and from the outside it looks exactly the same, but if I connect it, you see that it also includes the decimal point. But it's not on the right side, it's on the left side. This Nixie Cube is 15A and it has the plus and minus signs as well as the percentage and some letters. And this one is 15B, which also has a set of different characters for volts and ohms and hertz and so on. And of course those Nixie Cubes were meant for displays for some measuring equipment, which is a reason for having those different characters. I have one more Nixie Cube, this one is type 17 and it's very tiny, and it has those long connectors which were really hard to put inside this board, and as you can see I had to also solder those, but this display is just very cute. But back to my project, I wanted to see if I can fit the Nixie Cube inside the shifter knob, and I have a lot of 3D printed shifter knobs from my last videos, for example this one, so as you can see the Nixie Cube should fit inside. The problem is that my shifter knob is made from two pieces and they are connected using the nut and bolt, which means that I would need to place the Nixie cube only inside the top part and that might not be possible, there is not enough space. Which means that I need to change my design so there is more space inside and those two pieces are connected in a different way. And so I've decided to make the bottom piece hollow and screw those two pieces together. As always, I'm using Fusion 364 modeling, and I've started with the simplest possible model to test how I can fit those two pieces together. So I've created the new rectangle, and then using the revolve tool I've created the outside part, and then I've used the defret tool to add a fret to the inside, and when doing this, don't forget to check this model checkbox to add the actual 3D geometry. And from my current knob, I've measured that the size should be around 48mm, so I did went with this size, and the spacing between those individual threads is 3mm. And of course I wanted to make this as big as possible for easy 3D printing, but at the same time I want to keep at least one or two threads inside, so it feels like that the 3mm spacing is about right. Then I've revolved the second geometry, that's the inner part, and added the thread in the very same way, so added the thread to the outside with the very same settings. And then I've added some additional geometry, so I can screw those together once 3D printed quite easily. Something like that. But after 3D printing it, I've realized that it's almost impossible to screw those two pieces together, because there is simply not enough space between those two threads. So I have used the offset face tool to offset those thread faces and ended up using minus 0.2mm. Then it was time to 3D print it again and you can right click the body and select save as mesh and save it as a 3 file format. Or you can go to file and select 3D print. And if you set the path to your printing utility, you can just click the OK button and it will automatically open in that application. This time for 3D printing, I'm using the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer. With the 0.4mm nozzle, I'm using all the default settings, no changes in there. So I can just click the slice plate button 
and then take a look at those individual layers to see if there is anything wrong, which doesn't seem to be the case. Which means that I can send it to the printer by clicking the print plate button, and of course I do want to record the time lapse and click the send button. That will send the file to the printer and then it will jump to the device tab, where I can see the live stream from the printer itself. So let me quickly show you the time lapse. And this is the finished print. And with the slightly bigger spacing in between those threads, it's very easy to screw those two parts together. And so once this test part was working, I did 3D print just a section of the actual knob, just to make sure that it will work with the actual knob shape. And since this was working as expected, I did 3D print the hollow shifter knob with the big hole inside. At that point it was time to 3D print the outside shape of the Nixie tube, and that was quite challenging. Partially because there is no accurate technical drawing, but also because every Nixie tube is just slightly different. What's not so much different is the placement of those pins, so I've measured those positions and created this sketch. And later on I did found this image, and you can see I have those positions almost correct, so this is 8 and 11.5, that was the same positions. As for the vertical positions, those are 18, 16 and 9, and I've measured almost the same numbers. Which is of course great. And then I've measured the outer size of the Nixie cube and created this sketch, which also creates those helper lines on the top and bottom to create this hexagon shape. Then it was time to create 3D meshes out of those sketches by extruding parts and pieces, and I ended up with the shape that looks like this. So this is without the section analysis, and this is with the section analysis, and I of course needed to round those corners a little bit, and for that I've used the fillet tool, and I was playing with the different radius, as well as with this tangency weight settings. And you can set the radius with this arrow, and the tangency weight with this small arrow, so you can just change the shape of those rounded corners. I've added two more fillets, one on the top part to make it easier to put the Nixie tube inside, and one for the outer edges, so I don't have to print that much of the material. In the end the final test shape looks like this. And of course the first print was too small, and I did forget to add the hole in the middle for this small part in the center. But surprisingly the second print was almost perfect. I mean I thought that I will be tweaking this shape all day long, but thankfully that wasn't the case. I can fit the pins nicely, and I can fit the Nixie tube from the top side. Unfortunately not from the bottom side, because I haven't realized that the Nixie tube is slightly bigger on the bottom side. So I had to make one more iteration to make everything slightly bigger, and now the Nixie tube fits very nicely. So all that's left to do is to combine this shape, this outside of the Nixie tube shape, with the shifter knob shape. You can see that I can put this shape inside, that wasn't actually intentional, that's just a nice coincidence. In the end, those two shapes combined looks like this, this is with the section analysis. You can see that there is a little bit of space in between those two bodies, and that's because the same as the last time, I will put the metal ring inside in between those, but if for any reason you don't want to do that, there is also a space on the bottom, so you can screw those all the way, without having any gap inside. Other than that, there is really nothing special or different from the last time, so it's time to 3D print it again, by going to File and selecting 3D Print, and I think that you can select those individual bodies, but you can also click on this body itself, and that should export all those bodies inside, so click the OK button, and that will open that file in the Bamboo Studio. And when imported it looks like this, both of those pieces are on the same position, so I'll click this Arrange All button, that should fix it, and I will also click the Auto Orient button because I want this piece to be on the other side, so if I click it it should hopefully fix it, but if I slice the blade, you can see that there is some big overhang on both of those pieces, it's this blue one and that blue one, and it's actually more visible in the Fusion 360, so for the top part it's this overhang, and for the bottom part it's that overhang. And I don't think that I can print it without supports, so inside the Bamboo Lab Studio I will enable support and slice the plate again, but now those supports are also in places where I don't like them, like for example around this small thread, so I will decrease the threshold angle to maybe only 10 degrees and then slice the plate again, so now I only have those supports below those pieces where I want them to be. But after printing this, I've realized that it's very hard to remove the supports around those threads, so I've also increased the distance between those threads by increasing the support object XY distance from 0.35 all the way to 2 mm. So now there should be much more space between the thread and the support itself, but it should still support the thing that I want to support, which is this piece, and on the left side it's that area. The good news is that those supports are in places which will not be visible, 
but after 3k printing it, it was still quite hard to remove the supports from the right piece, it was just sticking to the object quite a lot. So what I've done instead was to get a special filament for supports for both the PLA and PETG, which unfortunately now is out of stock, and I did put it inside the AMS unit, inside the automatic material selection unit, which means that I can click this button to synchronize the filaments from my printer, so click the sync button, and right now I have three different filaments installed, so for the main parts I want to use this greyish blue filament for both of those, and then I will go to supports, and for the reft interface I want to use this support for PLA filament, and it will tell me that there are some recommended settings, I think that I will use them, so click the yes button, and if I click the slice plate button now, you will see that in between the support and the actual object, we have two layers of this special filament, so one and two layer on the right side, and we should get the same thing on the left side, so around here you can see that we have those two layers with the special filament, and then there is the object, so there is actually very little filament changes, only five, and we will use almost no support material. So I think that at this point it's time to 3D print it by clicking the print plate button, and then of course clicking the send button. And here is again a short time lapse of the 3D printing process. Now since the support filament is almost transparent, you probably cannot see the filament changes during the printing process, also because we were only using two layers for the top piece and two layers for the bottom piece. But let's wait until the 3D print is finished. And the PLA support material really makes a big difference. I can very easily remove the supports from the actual 3D printed piece, which means that all that's left to do is to just put everything together. So the Nixie tube should be placed in the top piece. I will use jumper wires to connect to the Nixie tube. Then I will screw those two pieces together with the metal ring being in between. And finally add this metal cap on the bottom piece. I will connect all the wires to the board, and we have probably the most unusual shifter knob out there. Now what I haven't mentioned is that those Nixie tubes are not being manufactured anymore, so they are all quite old and sometimes hard to get, but there are few companies that are starting to produce Nixie tubes again, one of them is a person named Dalibor Farni, and I have one of his Nixie tube in this big can, so let me just open it. Connect it to the power, and as you can see this is just a huge Nixie tube which just looks stunning. Unfortunately what's not so stunning is the price, but you can get a similar Nixie tube look with those fake Nixie tube clocks, and I have a few videos where I describe how to create your own themes for those clocks, I will put the links down in the description. Anyway, that's all for today, all for Nixie tubes, if you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon, thanks and bye.